Hello, welcome to Software Pulse, building Java desktop applications, and I'm John McNeil. In this video, we're going to build on the previous video where we used the Glue on Scene Builder to lay out some of our components. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a controller class for our scene, built-in um, scene builder, and connect up some of the widgets in our scene to our controller class. And we'll take a look at that. So just to remind everybody about what we're trying to do this is the speech tester application that um, has been featured in a number of other videos we've got a selection list here where you can select a voice you've got some fields where you can type things and if you press a button something will happen you press the clear button and that will clear all the fields so that's what we are trying to achieve so let's switch to our Eclipse IDE and our application. Now what we have so far, or what we did in the last video, was we created a speech UI FXML document that um, is what Scene Builder uses. And what we need to do now is we need to create a new class under our view package. And this is going to be our controller. So it's just an ordinary Java class, um, and speech UI. This is just a convention I've come up with. And what we are going to do is this class is going to implement the. I'm not sure I can spell this right. In in. There we are, initializable. The Java FX X FXML initializable interface. So we do that. And there's our core. Now if we go back to our application here. We have a number of fields. We've got the voice field, the pitch field, pitch range. All of these fields, all the way down to duration stretch, are fields where you can, well, sorry, even text to speak, are fields where we can enter information. And the one over here, this grey one, is the one where we populate information. So what we need to be able to do is we need to be able to gain access to these fields. And the way you do that is use an at fxml tag. Um, and then you create a field so the top one is a drop down box, a choice choice box, if you've seen the previous video you'll know that that's what it was um, so I'm going to create this voice field here for the choice box um, we're going to import the choice box and over here we've got a little error because we need to import the FXML as well so we simply have to do that for all of the fields that we have got on there so let's have a look at what we what that ends up looking like Um, oh, I've missed an at f xml out there, and I've lost all my indentation. So let's just quickly sort that out. There we are. So we've got a text area called words. Sorry, I keep pressing the wrong buttons. I've got dyslexic fingers today. Um, so words field which is not very cleverly named because I can't work out which one that is but let's let's move on to the rate so rate pitch so let's come back to here so we've got pitch there rates down there pitch range is there pitch shift is there duration stretch is there um, 
and all oh, right so voice details is the gray one over there so words field is the text to speak so what we'll see when we go back into our scene builder is we'll find that we'll be able to allocate each one of those um, fields we dropped on into scene builder we'll be able to link them up to these properties the, these properties we've defined in this class here now we implemented the initialize method and the reason why we did this is because um, when we start up when the application starts up and the scene is generated we are going to run this code and initialize to set up any fields we want so coming back here you'll notice that this is populated with a whole load of values and that's what happens when we started up we populated it with these values made them all available and the way we did that was here's the voice field we've defined up there and we're saying I want to get all the items for this and then I want to remove all and all the items I want to remove are in fact all the items that are actually in the voice field so this means every time we initialize the scene whatever was there before clear it out because we're going to start again just in case anything's changed and then what we do is we simply say we want to add all of the voices from voices dot get names and voices is a class that um, I haven't actually defined yet so so we could do something like that just to get us going so that's that right the other thing we're going to do is we've got a couple of buttons on our form so we've got coming back here we've got our OK button and our clear button so what we need to do is um, I'll just come down here so every time we press the OK button all it's going to do is print out to our console um, OK but anything you want to happen when the buttons press you can just put in there and then you do exactly the same again if you want the cancel button done so I'll just borrow that okay so that's how we're going to connect up our buttons um, so I'll just save that so that's, our, that's all we need for our controller class so I'm just going to close that down so now we come back to our, our main application and our start method so our main method just calls the launch with the art passing on the arguments to get our FX launched and then that will call in turn our start method it's just a standard way of starting FX applications and then I've got a method call here to call init root layout um, and what that allows me to do is it allows me to um, just set up some things down here and one of the things is is to load the speech UI FXML document so I create a loader, a new loader, and then I set the location based on where the controller class is, which we've just created, so it doesn't know where it is. So I'm just going to import it. There we are. So that. So it looks for this based on where the speech controller class is. It looks for a resource called speech UI FXML, and as they're both in the view package over here, it will find it. Um, and then we'll then we'll just come back and it sets the anchor pane um, which is the core part of that FXML document to the scene um, and then shows 
sets it to the stage and then shows the stage and the only other thing it's doing is um, it's there we're making use of a application CSS file um, so that's the only other thing that's being done I might take a look at that if we get enough time I might just show you how you can change one of the fields background to grey just using the CSS um, it's really a clever thing it's really a good thing to be able to do you can tag all of your fields and have them set by CSS values rather than configuring them in code which means that if you want to change the look and the feel of it later on you can easily do that um, but the main point here is just working out how to connect up our controller to our scene so what we'll do now is we will open our speech UI in scene builder and there it is and right down the bottom here you have a little on the left hand side you have a little thing called a controller class and in there you'll see it's picked up our speech controller UI um, and we set that and I'm going to save this I'm not sure whether it's going to work just by saving or whether I'm going to have to come out and go back in so now what I'm saying is that controller class is the one I am using and scene builder will now be able to look through the text in there and find all the at fxml tags to work out what's available so for example I've clicked on this um, choice I keep calling it a choice box it is um, it is a choice box I've clicked on this choice box and if I now go on the right hand side and pick the code section there's an FX ID and if you drop that down you can see here's all of the values we set in our controller and you just go through and you pick that one for voice and now we'll go to pitch and pick that and you'll notice the voice um, one is gone and if I pick the pitch the pitch will no longer be there now so we go on to pitch range so the number available gets fewer and fewer the more you select so you can work out whether you've got them all or not whether you've got enough of them and you just keep going through um, setting all the fields that you want set and so now when we set a value in code to those fields it will be reflected in the UI so that's all the field set now we have to do the buttons so if we pick the OK button this is an on action so we drop here and we can see that we've got handle OK as an option which we'll pick for there and for the clear we've got handle clear and that's all of those done we just simply save that we will close down our scene builder and I haven't saved this so let me save that so if we run this now here we are and if we pick the drop down list we can see we've got our one and two values in there and if I click the OK button you can see in the console down here it says handle OK and if I click the clear, clear button it says handle cancel so there we are we've seen how to link our controller to our gluon scene builder and how to load all of that up um, the one last thing I'm going to do is I said I was going to have a look at how you um, use CSS to change things so it's worth just having a look at that so if I open up my CSS file um, which is blank at the moment so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to define um, a background um, so I've set a radius and a color um, background color and an inner background color and I will save that 
into my application CSS file there and then what I will do is I will right click on my speech UI FXML document open with scene builder so this is the field we want this one over on the right hand side and um, I forget where we have to go. Let's try layout. I don't think it's layout though. Uh, properties. Yeah, properties. So you can set a style sheet. And what this will do is this will bring up a dialog box for you to select where the file is and by default it will go to the same package as you're in the view one so I'm just going to move to the application one select application press OK and that's now the style sheet um, I've set the style sheet for this particular element you can have different style sheets used for different parts of the the display or you could have set the style sheet for the root element and then everything else would have inherited um, and now when I select the class style I can set background there and as you can see it's gone grey and if I just preview this there you are you've got the grey background and the curved borders and now I can change the way that field looks without having to change any of the code in my program. I can just change to the CSS style sheet. So that's the advantage of doing it that way. So there you see we have got our JavaFX program. We've created our scene builder scene. Um, in a, a drag and drop um, utility and then we've created a controller for that scene so that we can link the front end fields with our back end Java code. So that's how we did it for the speech tester and it's the same basic principle for any of the other any other program that you may have. So I hope you have enjoyed it. I'm John McNeil this has been Software Pulse, building Java desktop applications.